Alrighty gang, this is going to be my first ever attempt at uh, dyeing plastic. So now, I will be using John's recipe with uh, John's custom saws. If you haven't seen his channel, check it out. Um, but anyways, he, he, he like does stuff like this for a living. He builds custom saws, and so he turns out some pretty cool stuff. But anyways, um, yeah, we're going to see how this goes. This is for my Echo 590, and I got them all cleaned up, and I'll tell you how I did that in just a second. Um, but I'm also going to be dyeing uh, the top cover and the recoil start and one other little piece from my Red Max 5300. What I've decided I'm going to do is my Johnson Red 5300. Um, no, my John's Red 2153. It was actually a 2152 that I put the 346XP cylinder on. So um, that's worth considerably more money than the Red Max, even though they're the same salt. It's just for some reason Red Max has not really tied in, gotten a, gotten a good name in this uh, in this country at least. Um, so, whereas I could sell the Red Max, hopefully for 200 bucks, fingers crossed, after dealing with hundreds of messages on Facebook Marketplace and all kinds of BS, or I could sell that Johnson Red probably for 300 bucks without much of an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 346 XP cylinder off of that Johnson Red, put the original... Um, non-346 XP cylinder, the open port setup that came with it, because like I said, it was originally a 2152. So I'll put that back on there, and then we'll say goodbye to what I have lovingly called Baby Doll. Um, I've had Baby Doll now for a couple years. It's been a great saw. Uh, there's very, very little difference between the open port cylinder and the closed port 346. Um, but um, if you port and polish it, the 346 cylinder really comes alive, from what I understand. Never witnessed it myself, but I'll do that on the Red Max. That way, um, I still have that saw, I still have that setup, which is kind of known by many people to be the best 50cc saw ever. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't want to get into that, I'm just saying that's what a lot of people consider it. Um, so I'll still have it, but I'll have it in the form of the Red Max. And I'm going to go ahead and some, dye some plastic with the Red Max. So the way that I cleaned this stuff up is uh, really simple. For one, it was nearly a brand new saw, so it cleaned up super easy. But like the, uh, the clutch cover, I blew it off with just air. That's it. And then nothing but a lot of dishwashing liquid and hot water. And that's the way I'm going to do this Red Max stuff right here. Um, just real quick, but uh, I won't bother you with uh, me scrubbing this away. I'll go ahead and pause this and I'll fire up the video whenever I'm ready to do my very first dip into that batch. Now the recipe on this, I'll write it in the comments below, but again it's John's recipe, John's custom sauce. I won't give him all the credit for this because if it turns out good, it's good. If it turns out bad, you're on my shit list, John. <laughs> I think it's going to turn out good, though. I'm, I'm excited about it. But it's, um, this is only a 12-quart pot, and you want to use a stainless steel or a generic stainless steel. They're not really stainless steel. You don't want to use an aluminum because the dye will transfer to the aluminum. Um, I mean, if you don't care, you don't care, right? But what I was concerned with is the recipe has some acetone in it. And I thought, I don't know, maybe that's going to react weird in this aluminum. So what I have is um, probably about 9 quarts. He recommends 10 quarts, but my, my pot ain't quite that big. So I've got about 9 quarts. I've got one bottle of black Rit dye. This is uh, 8 fluid ounces. This one right here is 7 fluid ounces, even though they look identical. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. One bottle of each, and this one is graphite. 
So graphite, according to John, is what gives it the shine and sheen. I like that. I want that. So uh, what else? It's got one full cup of acetone, a half a cup of vinegar, a uh, quarter cup of salt. I think that's it. But if, I, if I've misspoken, I will correct it in the comments. So I'm going to get to washing this, and I'll show you guys whenever I get this started. Okay, so here we are. It is at a slow rolling boil. I should get it hotter than that, but I'm impatient. It's taking forever. All right, with your tongs, make sure and use plastic tip tongs. If you don't, you'll scratch up your plastics. Here we go. We want to make sure that they are completely submerged. And I'll put that in there. Might as well. Now we've got the Red Max pieces. Put that in there. And I'm putting this entire assembly in. Maybe I shouldn't. But I am. Uh, that's all I'm going to risk putting in there. Now what I'm going to do. This right here is cold water. John says that um, when you use the cold water, you, you get it out of here and into the cold water, and it kind of shocks it. So I'm going to set this for 10 minutes. I'm going to let this cook for 10 minutes. Whenever the timer goes off, I'll put it in the cold water. Repeat. So, at the end of this video, I will let you know how many times I did 10 minute cycles. Alright? Oh, I remember the, uh, the other, excuse me, the other ingredient that I forgot. It was two tablespoons or two teaspoons of dish soap, dishwashing uh, liquid. And um, it helps to deal with any of the oils that might still be on there. Uh, but anyways, yeah, let's see. These right here are still fairly dirty. They're not, I mean, I cleaned them off good, but these came on a pretty well used, came off of a pretty well used saw. So it's very difficult to get them really clean. And, um, so I don't care. The outsides are good and clean and that's what's going to show anyways. So we'll see. That's a good test of... How clean should you get them? Will it ruin your water and all that stuff? Anyways. Okay, so it has been not even eight minutes. I already did a little looky look. Because, you know, that's what you do. And that junk is black. So... I tend to think that you don't need to leave it in there for a full 10 minutes. I mean, look at it. I mean, it's, it's black. It's not really dark. It's not, yeah, it's close. It is black. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get all these pieces out, put them into the cold water, like, like he says to do. Look at that guys, it is, it is black. It took the color quickly. That's the last two pieces right there. All right, we'll do that. Now, We'll 
we'll do a five minute timer for these two pieces. Be ready to clean up the mishaps so the missus doesn't get too mad for you making her kitchen all black. Actually, I'm the cook in the family. But anyways, so yeah. Here we go. Get this nice and cool. We're gonna go right into that container. Jeez, man, it looks like it looks like one treatment would be fine, but I'm definitely going to do at least two, probably three. I'll 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 do three. I'll do three treatments. But yeah, this is working very good. I am so impressed. Yeah, hunting around for those little pieces is a pain in the A. Now these, these two, one was red and one was black. I know the light's not very good, but this one was red. I'm sorry, one was red and one was orange. But... I can tell no difference between those two. Hot damn diggity. It's like they were molded black. It's just like they were molded black. That's pretty awesome. Cool. So these, we're gonna only have in there for five minutes. And I might as well just leave the camera going so that you'll see. Um, getting glue where the stickers were getting that glue off uh, so I've been getting stickers made at this decal shop and man the guy gave me some interesting uh, knowledge he said um, stickers uh, you can get gasoline resistant stickers but you almost exclusively can't get oil resistant uh, he said, all the glue, um, nearly every glue that's out there that is used for stickers, it will dissolve with oil. And so he said, so whenever you get that, that gooey film on there, he's like, just take some um, cooking spray, some, you know, Pam cooking spray or something like that. All it is is oil, olive oil based or vegetable oil based. And you leave that sit and then you can wipe off that glue. Um, so it made me think, I was like, oh, that's, that's why this works. Because this is like a citrus oil. But anyways, it's oil. Now, you got to wait. You got to put it on there and let it dissolve and everything. But there you have it. Man, I'm digging this. It looks good. As it's drying off, it's totally looking good. Wow. And easy and cheap. I mean, like, you know, there's a handful of ingredients, but guess what I always have laying around? Acetone. Anybody that's got a decently uh, stocked garage is going to have acetone. Because you use acetone to clean up all kinds of stuff. Or at least I do. So I already had the acetone. Um, quarter cup of salt, check. Already got that. Dishwashing detergent, check. Already got that. I do a lot of pickling, so plain white vinegar, right? I didn't, you know, he didn't make a di distinction between apple cider vinegar or white vinegar. I used white vinegar. Got, uh, got a half a cup of that, no problem, check. The only things that I had to purchase was these two bottles, right? One's black and one's graphite. Bought them on Amazon. They were like $3.47 each. It's cheaper than paint. 
<laughs> as long as you've got most of the stuff, which I did, you know, I, most people do. Um, the only thing that most people don't have are these. So, hell, and a bottle of spray paint, which likely isn't going to work, um, unless you do everything really right. There we go. Ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. They are completely black. Awesome. All right. Now put these back in. Timer set. <laughs> this is fun. Now this one on the inside I can only suspect that it's from there being some spots where there was still oil or grease or whatever, some gunk that gets built up in chainsaws. It didn't take. Only in that small little spot. The rest of it, it did. So, this is the front. This is for the Red Max. Right here, you can see that this spool right here for the recoil did not take very well at all. You can also see a spot right there. Can you? Can you see it? There you go. Now you, you see it. That it didn't take. But my God. This is one dip. For five minutes. Looks like it worked. A charm. I am a very happy customer right now. Can't wait to get him out in the sunlight. So I'm going to shut the camera down and the next time you'll see this operation is in the sunlight where we can get good shots of these and see what they actually look like. And um, uh, I'll tell you how many times I dipped them and everything. Oh, there they are guys. These things look great. Um, I. Uh, I got to get some stickers put on them. Um, whenever I get some stickers, jazz them up. Then I'll go over them with Cerakote. That stuff will really cover up like this one. This was used he pretty heavily. No, I mean, not bad, but, you know, I mean, it, it has seen li you know, life working. And um, so there was a lot of scratches, a lot of little scratches and stuff. And the Cerakote will really help out with that. But this is the Red Max, of course looks stellar I love it you know I would have never dyed plastic on my Johnson red the Johnson red is just it's too high class sorry I don't, I don't want to screw with it <laughs> um, the echo here looks really boss I mean just really 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 good my gosh ah. now here I had roughed this up because it was it was really bad. The guy I bought this from, he bought it specifically to cut a tree stump that was right beside a sidewalk. So he had clearly laid the saw on the sidewalk and and so that he could cut as close to the ground as possible. But anyways, man, it looks great. So I got to get a sticker to cover this up. Once I get all stickered up, then, you know, I'll go ahead and Cerakote it and it'll shine up and it'll look really 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 good but i'm about to do a test of this muffler right here see how big of a difference it makes uh and the carburetor mod i did a full carburetor mod on this not just popping the limiters out i popped open this carburetor and i jb welded the bottom of the high side jet hopefully in order to get it to stop being too lean on the uh on high rpm I'm sorry, too rich. Sorry, 
too rich. You can't control it uh, well enough. Anyways, but uh, yeah, there's the plastic die. Thanks, John. You guys, if you guys haven't looked up his channel, John's Custom Saws is what it's called. It's on YouTube. Check it out. He's also on Instagram, and I, I don't know what he's called on there, but, you know, I don't do the Instagram thing. But anyways, this worked out really well. This just straight up looks like plastic. It looks like black plastic, and it looks like it was meant to do that. Now, the, the Red Max is scratched a little bit much, but uh, on this one right here, the plastics were pristine and there is a slight sheen to it it's i can't i just can't tell you enough it, it looks great it looks fantastic so anyways yeah i'm fixing to fire this echo up see if i can get that carb to tune right and uh, see how it feels and uh then lo and behold you will see it in a proper whack off <laughs> anyways that's enough for this video